and we are in Psalm um, 119, line 35. Make me walk in the path of your commandments, for I delight in it. And so now he's saying, make me uh, walk in the path of your commandments. All right. So remember, those commandments is God's person or his nature, the person and nature of God. And so uh, let's go to Psalm 1, 2. Psalm 1, line 2. For reference scripture. That says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And, he, and in his law, he meditates day and night. And that is so true. Um, we need to delight ourselves in the law of the Lord. And then, and we need to meditate on it day and night. So both delight in it and meditate in it. And so make me walk in the path of your commandments for I delight in it. And he loves walking in the commandments of the Lord. 36. Incline my heart to your testimonies and not to covetousness. So say, incline my heart to testimonies and not to um, covetousness. And so remember, um, you know, God's testimony is his word is his own testimony. And so being that, so he's saying that incline my heart to uh, your testimonies and not to uh, covetousness. So that means in his own word, you know, let his heart be set upon God's word instead of what? On, on greediness and wanting uh, things, um, wanting what other people have and all this other stuff. So let me see First John. See, I have First John two sixteen in my um, margin. Let's see what that says. <clears throat> Let's see. That says for all the flesh, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And so and that's what that uh, that covetousness come in at. All right, that's what that um, covet, <clears throat> covetousness come in at. And so, um, and if we can incline our hearts to, uh, to God's word, then we don't have to fulfill those lusts of the flesh, the lusts of the eyes, and the pride of life. And then we can do this, 37, turn away my eyes from looking at worthless things. Those are all worthless things. And revive me in your way so and that sends us to Isaiah 33 15 about turn my eyes away turn away my eyes Isaiah 33 15 those eyes are can it are something they will draw us away from things from um, doing the right things and stuff he who walks righteously and speaks uprightly he who despises the gain of oppressions who gestures with his hands refusing bribes who stops his ears from hearing of bloodshed and shuts his eyes from seeing evil so that just corroborate uh, that showing about turning away my eyes from looking at worthless things and then that worthless things um since it's to Proverbs 23, 5. That says, Will you set your eyes on that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away like an eagle toward heaven. Okay, and so I just corroborate that. You know, those uh, wickedness and all those evil things and things that draw us away from God, all those things right there, all those things are fleeting. They're not going to last. And so that's why eyes always need to be on the Lord because God is forever. He's going to last. Everything else is going to fade away and pass. So um, 
Let's look at 38. It says, establish your word to your servant who is devoted to fearing you. So establish your uh, word to your servant who is uh, devoted to fearing you. And so that is, that sends us to 2 Samuel 7.25. that says and now O lord god the word which you have spoken concerning your servant and concerning his house establish it forever and do as you have said all right so and now O lord god the word which you have spoken concerning your servant and concerning his house establish it forever and do as you have said and that is so true when god speaks we all need to listen because whatever he says is true and it's going to happen. It's going to happen. And a lot of people can't understand that. When God says something, it's going to happen. He said to Adam and Eve, the day you eat of that tree, you're going to die. What are we doing dying? So would you really respect God and love God if everybody continues to live and not die? And he said that we were going to die. For being disobedient, God is a God of his word. And yes, it hurts when we lose loved ones. It hurts. I've lost so many people in my life. Yet, I still love and trust God because he's a God of his word. He's a God of his word. And if we can't love God for who God is, Even though it hurts, even though we, we're facing it, God is a God. I mean, even Jesus said, in this world, you're going to have trials and tribulations, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. We're going to overcome. And all the people who have you lost in your life, if they died in the Lord, they're going to overcome as well. But God is going to do what he said he's going to do, whether we like it or not. Whether we picture fit or not, whether we cry or not, God is going to do what he says he's going to do. And I love God for God. I love you, Father. I love you, Father. And I'll see you in the next segment.